that one. Do you see my, my slides correctly, I think? Yep, looks okay. Yeah. Um, all right. So welcome to the spatial omics data analysis course. So the, I'm Paul Sharnevsky. I work at the National Bioinformatics Infrastructure um, in, in Sweden. And together with uh, a team, uh, let's see. So who we, are we? So we are a lot of labs in, involved in this. Uh, there is Charité in Germany, and Navid is uh, here uh, as well. There are people involved from Fabian Thais lab, so Giovanni Palla, Anna Schaar, uh, Hanna David, as well as from uh, Carolina Velbi, who is also here uh, today. There are many people involved, and Christoph Avenel, which is also the course leader uh, for, for this instance, as well as collaborators for from Max Nielsen group, which is the, the group that developed ISS, from also Joachim Lundeberry, the one that developed uh, spatial transcriptomics, uh, and also Stanley Noshon, uh, in, in this case here, also Lars Born, uh, who will present uh, to you today uh, an introduction of spatial omics techniques and also have developed many different um, technologies for spatial uh, data analysis. So this is uh, a very big effort in trying to create one of the most comprehensive courses in spatial omics. So just some practicalities, so we are on the same page. Um, so all lectures and exercises will be held in this Zoom link. So I, I sent the calendar invites that start a little bit earlier, but you uh, usually will start uh, around uh, nine. You can log in before if you want and just leave it on mute. Uh, that is fine. So during the sessions that we will be presenting, or uh, it's okay to leave the cameras off, but when, whenever we are talking to each other, it will be nice to have the, the cameras on so we know that we're talking to someone. Uh, and then also uh, make sure you, you're muted, otherwise uh, just unmute yourself for, to, to ask questions. And please be kind and show respect to everyone. Everyone here is also learning. Um, so that is uh, a little bit on the code of conduct. And if you have questions, just uh, unmute yourself and, uh, and ask directly. Don't, don't need to raise your hand. Or you can actually just raise your hand. And then uh, usually the speaker doesn't see who is uh, raised hands there. So maybe, uh, yeah, ju just make yourself heard. Otherwise, you can also just ask questions on the, the Zoom chat or on the Slack, but on the Slack, remember that the Slack, it's good because then all the questions are there. Other people maybe with the same questions will also see. The Zoom chat usually disappears after the, the Zoom link, so it's not uh, always great. But for uh, instance, uh, if you just are wondering about something that is quite quick, so then Zoom chat is also okay. Um, during the exercises, um, uh, one of the things is that uh, please uh, include many breaks. So we actually include, included breaks, but make use of them just so we don't, because it's uh, a lot of times we'll be looking at the Zoom and stay, staring at our own, own computers for, for quite some time. So uh, take your time, take your coffee break uh, during the exercises as well. Feel free to do that. And also during the exercises, in, in many instances, we'll be working in groups. So it's always nice to, to work um, with, with your, the people in your group and have your cameras on again, uh, just so you, you know what you're uh, talking to, rather than having a, um, a breakout room that everyone is blank. Uh, and then it's usually not a good course experience for either of, of the one involved. And please explore the exercise as a group. Start discussing, oh, I'm running this one. I'm having problems. Uh, you can actually help each other in, in the groups. And then uh, running that together, that creates more a, a cohesive uh, analysis that, that you actually can explore and have fun during this course. And of course, the teachers will come by and uh, uh, explain or help you in, uh, in any way. So in Slack, there are most of the communication will be uh, be held there. So there are the general channel where most of the course information will be given. 
the exercises. If you have questions on the exercises in general, you can post it there. Uh, installation issues, we have been using already that uh, for, for some time, but not we didn't have that many installation issues uh, as of now. Um, and then there are also some other rooms uh, that are that I created, but I need to add uh, people uh, in, in those yet. That you can actually you have your rooms in the in the Zoom that will be working together, but the Zoom chat is usually not good as I, as I already previously mentioned. But the, on Slack chat is actually good. So then actually you can post things and communicate also via the Slack. And I created that one room dedicated to to you, so you can actually work together and maybe troubleshoot together. And that's also another way to uh, call the, um, the te te teaching assistants like, like us. So we can actually go to the room and help you uh, whenever needed. And then there is also the, the one with questions, if you have any other general questions about the course. But otherwise, just post in any of those and we'll be uh, there to, to help you. So for the installations, as you could see, uh, we are using a software called Conda. So Conda is a package manager for scientific so software and it's one of the easiest ways for you to install software in, in your own computer. So imagine this situation that a, a person has a, a specific number of softwares and different versions that work together. And then for that, she, can, she or he can uh, run the analysis. Let's say that this is a pipeline uh, called Sauron and then he gets results. And then what that person can do is then create a con environment that has specifically those versions. And then you can, of course, reproduce the, the results that he or she has created. However, software versions is quite uh, tricky, especially, for example, I, that person number two has another computer and environment. So she has he has been working with different uh, versions. Or it can be even yourself in the future, because you update your packages. And then suddenly the software that you created before or like running the, the this pipeline does not work anymore because maybe there are packages that are missing or the versions do not, are not compatible anymore. And having Conda allow you to create this minimal environment that you can actually run some analysis. So this is just in brief why we chose uh, Conda. And there are many different virtual environments uh, that um, that provide the same. So in R, there is PackRat. In Python, there is PyEnv. But what Conda does is that it takes basically that for all programming languages. So for example, there are other package managers. So how you can install packages. So in R, Python, Mac OS, Linux, or Windows, there are different uh, software that can install packages for you. And Conda basically is, is the compilation of both of them. So it can handle many different programming languages and also installing many different uh, operational systems. Uh, Windows is an exception-ish because you need to use uh, Linux subsystem to install most of the packages on Windows via, via Conda. But it's also possible, and we provided the, the instructions how to do that. And Another thing that is quite convenient, especially for you now taking this course, uh, one of the reasons we enforce uh, the use of Conda is that then you can actually take this environment and apply directly to your own project. So basically, when you had already created the course uh, environment, so there is this Mamba Env create and then the course environment file, we you can simply just, instead of putting the name Spatial 2022, you can put your project name. And then your project will have exactly the same versions that you have used in the course. Um, there are other ways you can actually export an environment, as I mentioned before, like if person one wants to give the course environment to uh, person two, you can basically export the environment using also this command. And all those slides will also be available on uh, I think they are already available on the, on the course web page. Uh, you can basically copy these lines and uh, and do it uh, later on. And a good uh, tip is that, that each project has its own individual code environments. So I have, for example, now I'm using for the course, but then I want to use, um, I have my, my own project. 
uh, ideally, you create another environment, even though if it's the same packages, you create another environment for that project specifically, rather than reusing uh, different environments. And this allows you to like keep track of which versions are being used on different um, projects. But this is just some general guidelines. So how you can actually use the information and all the resources that we provide in this course later on for your own projects. And of course, the single cell spatial omics field has uh, increased exponentially. Um, there are many different uh, techniques and cells being produced in different uh, omics technologies. The number of tools is also increasing exponentially with over uh, 1,200 uh, tools already developed to, to since last year, until last year. Many different technologies uh, are available as well. Um, and in this course, it's a one of a kind uh, that we can say is one of the first to have this very comprehensive overview of different special omics techniques and integration with single cell. Um, and it's also the first iteration. And we have a selected a few tools and pipelines that we think are most relevant in, uh, in most cases. Of course, we're missing a lot. There are still a lot of there, uh, up there to be um, explored. Um, but also use your reason if you want to have a uh, maybe you have a different problem, you can actually maybe adapt some of the tools to use in your particular problem. So briefly, I'll just go a little bit on the over the, the schedule. That's also on the on the web page. We'll have a brief introduction of uh, ISS, so in situ sequencing, how to uh, analyze spot and molecule uh, level resolution spatial omics data. Um, and Later on, we'll go a little bit on the finish, the ISS, and do analysis of in situ sequencing data, as well as integration with single cell um, to, to really deconvolve and see like which cell types are present in, uh, in, in space. Later, we'll also view a little bit on uh, spatial transcriptomics data analysis and go into more details. Uh, on the spatial analysis per se. So for example, analysis of niche, spatial domains, uh, and also image analysis uh, in general for from uh, spatial transcriptomics. And later on, we'll also go for cell-to-cell -cell communication and in inference and try to uh, identify functions and how cells placed in space work together. And finally, we'll also go through a little bit on uh, cell type deconvolution on spatial transcriptomics plus in situ uh, plus uh, single cell data, and as well as uh, spatial mapping to of several different uh, images to a reference. So it's a, what is called a core common coordinated framework. But this is a very brief overview. We'll go through those in detail uh, later on. And one of the last uh, topics will be uh, super resolution projection of uh, gene expression into tissues. So if you have, for example, Vision uh, data sets that you have the different spots and you have uh, h and &E image, you could pro project gene expression to find a high resolution where this gene is expressed in h and &E images. And the code, uh, we created the, there is the workshop spatial, uh, and it's uh, in the labs. Actually, there's no, no compiled, it's just labs. If you have any questions, ask in the exercises again. Um, if you find any uh, bugs, or maybe if you're actually uh, cloning the, the repository in the schedule page, now there is a, a link to download the whole Git, uh, GitHub repo, or you can download the, the labs uh, separately, but we'll go through this uh, a little bit later on, on as well. You can just do a git pull and we'll be updating the, the the exercises during the week. So make sure that you have always the the latest one uh, available. So just some uh, minor things. Um, when using the, the course, um, files. So make sure that you're always um, able to reproduce the results. And that's one of the reasons why we use Conda. So people can actually reproduce what you have done. Um, 
And in many cases, uh, you should be able to run through the through the scripts and using the input files that we provided. And most of the, in many cases, all the results would be very very similar. And on Jupyter notebooks, for example, never use the the preloaded uh, information that is in there. So you can go to cell all output and then clear. So you basically re uh, clean the the environment the of, of the Drupal notebooks and then you can start running the the exercises yourselves because some of the times the how to say the the output will be still saved in the Jupyter notebook so you can actually uh, erase by using following these steps um yes so I think this is the most important part for for this one right now yeah, so if you have any troubles, uh, ask in the exercises, ask for help. And you can also troubleshoot with yourselves in, in, uh, in the exercise group in the different rooms. So please discuss that and, and go through. If the problem persists, just ask. Or you can also pin us in the Slack channel uh, in the different rooms that I will add you there. Uh, and we'll come and help you as much as we can. And please note that in many situations, we might also not have all the answers to you, but we'll do the best we can to, to help you. And again, please ask questions. Uh, we're here to help. You have one full week dedicated to guide you through the, these different types of analysis. It is a quite uh, intensive and very extensive course. And we totally know that, and we want to you to get also the best out of it. 